Lloyd, do you believe that Indian consumer is truly enigma? Uh, Absolutely. If you want to nail and understand the enigma of Indian consumer, this is the episode for you. Behind the veneer of just one country, there is a series of subtext and subcultures. There is a lot of countries within countries, so to say. The moment a global company sees India as nothing but a market to repurpose mm -hmm. their global content, I think that's where there's a hurdle. Indians, by definition, expect a bit of customization. You need to have multiple strategy, even if your product is single. Because the market is fully different. What is the message and advice to Elon Musk? Hi, welcome to Enigma India. This episode is a special one. If you are a global business or an investor wanting to invest or do business in Indian markets, this is the episode meant for you. Indian consumer has been an enigma for, I think, more than a decade or century, so to say. It's always been difficult to crack what Indian consumer really wants. India is a land of myriad culture, traditions, and complex demographics. Our consumers and customers have different expectations and it's very difficult and sometimes tricky to nail what we really want. But if you want to nail and understand the enigma of Indian consumer and how to nail the customer experience here, then this is the episode for you. Today, I have a towering personality who has been there, done that. A global leader, influencer, angel investor, board of directors. I think there are several hats uh, my guests wear. Today, for, for all of you, he will be taking us through the journey that will help you understand Indian consumer better. There'll be examples, there'll be case studies, there'll be anecdotes. You will have a lot more um, as a takeaway to nail what you need to nail in Indian consumer markets. Lloyd, welcome to this show and I'm very pleased and happy to host you today. Thank you, Jyoti. Pleasure to be on Enigma India and really looking forward to this conversation. Fantastic. So, Lloyd, do you believe that Indian consumer is truly Enigma? Uh, or there's a there's an Enigma around Indian consumer to uh, for global companies to really figure that out? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I could just speak out of, let's say, by working with three large global MNCs, starting with PepsiCo and then with Motorola and with HP. I think the assumptions that a lot of global companies companies come with to India mm. uh, soon have to be recalibrated. Mm. And essentially, I think because understandably, most companies approach India as a unified market, as a mm. country, as they should. But when you look at it, behind the veneer of just one country, there is a series of subtext and subcultures. I'm just to throw a couple of points. India has 714 districts. Now, the district mm. is the smallest administrative unit, mm. uh, the way a company is governed by the central government, so 714 mm. districts. The second point, which is even more, you know, let's say complex, is the fact that India has over 660,000 villages. So really, you're talking about you know, each village being a small geographic entity in itself. Mm. And... Uh, there are 780 languages. Mm. While you know the Indian currency note has 18 official languages, yeah. there are 780 languages. So essentially, it really means that for every 50 or 100 kilometers you travel, you're actually entering into a very different zone. When people right. think, uh, work, uh, and, and, and emote, and even kind of interact differently. And I think mm. a lot of companies look at it as one geographical entity, as mm. they would when they enter Europe or a mm. particular country in Africa or South America, and expect a lot of homogeneity, mm. which is not the case. Mm. So until you recognize that there are various Indias within India, mm. I think that's when companies begin to recalibrate and rethink their own approach. Totally. It's like Russian dolls. Right, you have, to have a you open one. There's another one. Then then there's another one. But yes, there is a lot of countries within countries, so to say. The food habits change, and um, and we're just getting started on the how diverse uh, diversity is in Absolutely. India. Yeah. Right. Uh, you have been in 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 uh, some of the global uh, you know Fortune 500 companies. You have held leadership role, and uh, I would like to pick up your role with HP. Mm -hmm. Uh, where you were leading the India and Asia pack in the uh, PC business. I'm sure um, you had competition too, but you did something unique and distinct in those times, which was bend the rule. How that campaign uh, was imagined and uh, how did you nail the uh, millennial uh, getting hooked on to HP uh, computers? Uh, interesting backstory to that, Jyoti. Mm -hmm. I think it is essentially we recognize that 
laptops as a category mm. were in a sense what is called a legacy category mm. there's a whole generation of young people for whom the primary digital device was the smartphone mm. right so they woke up to the smartphone they chatted with their mm. friends on the smartphone they even did official mail they even did presentations they even worked on excel on their smartphone mm. so th- at one level the pc category felt a little threatened right mm-hmm. the large users of pcs who are office goers and older people right uh, over time and the younger people coming in were getting very smartphone savvy mm. so i think hp recognized in a sense that the future of the pc is in a in a bit of a mm. you know it's questionable yeah the second point we also realized that there's a young demographic younger mm. millennials and mm. gen z mm. uh, who wanted to work things on their own mm. so basically they liked the fact that there was a set of rules but they always loved to bend the rules mm. and therefore in hp we worked this whole campaign around what we call bend the rules mm. which is saying that typically and specifically in the context of india mm. young people work by a certain set of norms but always can work around them without really upsetting the apple cart to work mm. forward so the whole theme was the campaign was bend the rules it mm. was also a process where hp was reinventing itself mm. so the whole idea was that from a stodgy stayed uh, mm. relatively legacy category how do you become contemporary how do you work with the new generation of millennials and therefore mm. the whole idea was bend the rules bend the rules had two dimensions one was the fact that hp had just launched a laptop which could be turned 360 degrees mm. so you can effectively use it like a tablet you could mm. use it so it was as versatile as a smartphone yeah. obviously it had immensely more computing power than a traditional smartphone that mm. helped and the whole campaign thought uh, mm. with, you know hp had signed on dipika padukone for this yeah. campaign the whole campaign thought was a fact that young people do it very differently mm. and while they are in off their celebrities mm. they're not overwhelmed by them right mm. so the little storyline that the creative agency came through was the fact that a young person meets the picard of light and mm. is quite impressed mm. but doesn't get carried away and then has a worthy conversation mm. also the fact that office goers didn't have to be traditional suit wearing tie wearing people mm. sitting in the office yeah. you could be in a coffee shop mm. and you could be running a multi billion dollar business yeah. so i think hp tried to bring that aspect mm. that in a sense endeared the brand to the younger mm. demographic and also help a lot of young people realize that mm. there are limitations to working with a smartphone mm. when you still want to be more productive and you want to do great things mm. there's nothing like the pc so in a sense it kind of bent the rules of communication it also helped hp reinvent mm. with a younger demographic mm. and more importantly it brought out the versatility of the product right i think you touched upon a very interesting point here that most of the time celebrities are brought in to endorse a product and we think that they're going to fix the whole issue the way the bend the rule campaign was blended and you mentioned traditions you know um the traditional office goer is seen in suit boot and style uh and which is my next question is um there is a lot of cultural and traditional sensitivity around uh, customers there's a lot of perception that we all of us carry and some are unique to indian consumers some some is of course a global thing um how do a customer experience approach uh in your context or in your experience uh uh takes care uh, of nuances of the traditional and the uh, emotions of the uh, con- uh, your consumer essentially i think for every marketer or every business i think to understand the consumer is the biggest challenge mm. and understanding the consumer is really a function of getting deep insights about the consumer mm. uh what you recognize is that in formal research mm. people tend to put on a certain veneer of what they want mm. to communicate mm. but when you observe people you actually realize what really matters to them mm. so i think understanding and working off consumer insight is the key element really mm. understanding what is the local cultural context what is the insight mm. uh in india this adds a new dimension altogether given the diversity mm. the fact that like we said every 100 kilometers yeah. uh the consumer in some way is changing some things that are acceptable in one part are not mm. so acceptable right. then of course the diversity of language the festivals religions and such like right. so i think that's the other part i think for a good business mm. it is really recognizing the fact that these are the insights that work and this is what you must play off mm. so i could just give you examples of shall we say businesses that that understood this well and moved well and yes. some that didn't uh in 1996 kellogg's came to india they were a world market leader in breakfast cereal right Absolutely. everyone knows they were the world market leader it's a great example lloyd and they yeah. just they launched in india with kellogg's cornflakes and yes. two years later they were still struggling hmm. 
what they hadn't taken into account that most Indians wake up to a warm breakfast. Their yes. idea of breakfast was warm, right? Yeah. You know, pouring cold milk on cornflakes wasn't their idea it for breakfast. There. Two was Kellogg's was playing off the health platform. Mm. Went to a large section of Indians, mm. health was never really a concern back in the 90s. It certainly mm. is today. It never mm. was a concern. It was mm. about having a good tasty uh, you know, breakfast to start kick, kick start your day. Yeah. And I think third was the pricing and the packaging was very inflexible. Mm. I mean, you know, who bought a, you know, a, a, a one kilogram pack, yeah. right? A lot of Indian homes are small. People mm. tend to want to work with small sachets. You mm. want five rupee packs. You want mm. these little 50 gram and 100 gram packs, mm. single use packs. Mm. They hadn't recognized this, mm. right? In three or four years, you know, Kellogg's virtually disappeared. And disappeared, of course, they came yeah. back in a new avatar and yeah. they recognized the fact that uh, today Kellogg's has an upma, has mm. local breakfast and a yes. rework the strategy. That's one. Uh, the other big, I think, was the American automobile giants. Mm. Uh, both GM and Ford uh, yeah. were the first entrants automobile after Suzuki. Suzuki mm. came in with the government mm. uh, in the late 80s. 80s. But GM and Ford were there in 94. And 10 years later, they're both out of the country. Mm. The four successful brands, Suzuki, of course, still remains the dominant player with about mm. a 50% share. But Toyota is great mm. uh, because of its, uh, you know, you can say its robustness and the fact that they mm. understand the Indian consumer. Mm. Uh, Hyundai is great because they are pricing. They do fabulously well. Mm. Uh, Suzuki, of course, has played on their sheer dominance in terms of fuel efficiency and, and service efficiency. And to an extent, Volkswagen has played on their engineering. Mm. What GM and Ford got wrong was a complete lack of customization. Hmm. They bought the American offering into India, hmm. right? So a lot of the controls were not regular. I mean, they hmm. moved a left-hand drive to a right-hand drive, right drive, but your indicators, your hmm. headlights were still different. They hadn't done enough of an understanding of the Indian consumer, hmm. the importance of fuel efficiency, hmm. uh, the importance of having a great service network, yeah. uh, the price sensitivity. Hmm. And I think therefore, the moment you bring a non-customized offering and hmm. say, okay, it worked in large mm. parts of the world, it better work in India. Mm. I think you're missing a trick. So I think these are elements. Yeah. If I were to extend the analogy, and there are companies that after a you know, stop and start, mm. then got things right. Mm. I mean, Kellogg's over time certainly has. And uh, you know, I dare say two great examples of companies getting it right, or maybe three, uh, McDonald's, Amazon, and I think the Cola majors. Mm. I think what they recognize, and maybe the mm. Cola's first, because I spent a lot of time in that mm. category, is that, the young Indian consumer is vastly different. Hmm. He likes international imagery. You know, he likes the great sites of the West, the New York, etc. But he still wants to do things his own way. Right. He likes the local touches of Bollywood. Yeah. His biggest sport is cricket. Hmm. Uh, he likes international pop, but nothing like a bit of indie pop, a little hmm. bit of Bollywood mix. Hmm. And therefore, Pepsi and Coke evolved their own Indian idiom. Right. Pepsi had this great line, Ye dil mange more, hmm. which struck a chord. Oh, absolutely. Which is, you know, the heart year. National anthem, absolutely. it was. And uh, Coke did something equally hmm. well in, uh, hmm. you know, Thanda Matlab Coca-Cola, which is, matlab, yeah. you know. If it's um, cold, uh, it's Coke. If it's cold, it's, it's got to be <laughs> but, Coke. Yeah. Now, both these lines became part of the local lingo. Yes. And made a huge difference uh, to consumers and people adopted it. Right. Right? It was no longer, it was still that international brand, hmm. but it's someone that they could relate to. Right. I think McDonald's, again, got it right. Hmm. They started off with the wedge burger. Yes. Right? Who would think a Big Mac would come without uh, without meat? Uh, it did well. In fact, uh, most recently, as mm -hmm. of a fortnight ago, uh, McDonald's recognizing there's the the Navratras and the Shad period, mm -hmm. and some of the outlets actually are having an entirely vegetarian offering, mm -hmm. which I think is is remarkable. Yes. So I think great. Uh, I would say Amazon seems to have customized their offering pretty good. Mm -hmm. Right, they were the first company in India me soon after Flipkart mm. to work on a cash on delivery. Yes. Of course, Flipkart itself is owned by Walmart. Mm. Now, cash on delivery is a very Indian concept, right? Mm. Nowhere else in the world it exists, it worked. Mm. Uh, the fact that they compared Amazon to the neighborhood store. Yes. Like you've got an impulse buy, you want something, mm. uh, you want a pack of noodles, order it on Amazon, you'll get it in the evening. Mm. So I think the ability to customize, mm. to account for local tastes, mm. local variants, like McDonald's did having mm. an aloo tikki burger, yeah. I think opens up a whole new market segment. Totally. And until you recognize and work with that, it'll always remain, you'll always mm. remain a peripheral offering. So I would say right. a lot of you know global companies have got it right. And that's because they recognize that this Indian consumer is vastly different from mm. the consumer they have elsewhere. Mm. And they gave their local management the freedom to experiment, to try out a few things. Right. And eventually succeeded. Totally. No, definitely. And, and just uh, Indian consumer is just not different just at a one level. It's different at expectations level. Sure. Uh, and um, so if... Uh, if we have to pick up a great case studies from Pepsi, Pepsi, Coke, MACD, uh, there's one thing which is pretty c coming out pretty clear. You may be a global giant uh, universally, uh, 
but when it comes to ma- in entering indian markets i guess there are a lot of unlearning that you have to do on on uh, on our shores and do that unlearning enter indian markets and i'm sure you will have chances to kind of build some ground uh, upward businesses here there is a lot of element of customization and customization happens uh, when you know your consumers well the examples that you gave are truly standing out uh, for uh, various element the campaign itself the marketing language used the positioning of the product uh, and clearly identifying your target audience and doing everything around it uh, was also a, a reason for success for uh, pepsi and coke a uh, customization example of macd that you gave that truly stands out amazon which has been the biggest beneficiary of india's demographic dividend uh, has done tremendous amount of modification for the india business plans um so what we are trying to say here is that um, the indian consumer uh, di- is different from the point of view of its choices of buying uh-huh. how it buys at the price point it buys uh, delivery options or experience he gets by wearing or you know uh, holding the bottle in hand and how it's been communicated to the, uh, to sure. the consumer sure. now that's a t- tremendous amount of maze to deal with right do you think these international ex- you know companies that have cracked the code um, i'm sure it wasn't easy for them but which are the companies in india that you think has truly nailed the consumer experience and uh, is it because of the indian leadership on top and indian founders which are the companies you think has got it bang on when it comes to nailing i think loads of companies and like i said this process is never one off it's about mm. fine tuning mm. but i'll just get back to a couple of thoughts thing mm. besides the fact that the indian consumer is different mm. i think there's also a recognizing the indian ambience mm. uh, the fact that we live in a world that's vastly different i'll you yeah. do you know one very famous example mm. uh, it's about this global mall developer that came to india mm. and had a set pattern that to run mm. a mall of x amount of square feet mm. uh with let's say 200 stores this is the amount of staff you require right so mm. you can't for security you require for mall staff you mm. require for admin and housekeeping and this mm. is what it is and suddenly they found that the indian number mm. was just not working out and then on a closer observation you recognize that in a lot of the early malls that came up mm. you actually had to deploy a mm. security guard at every escalator mm. because there was always a case of an older person who was scared mm. to get onto the escalator mm. or a lady who's you know mm. clothing or apparel or sari get stuck into the stairs now suddenly when you tote that up you suddenly mm. realize that hey this never happened elsewhere so yeah. these are small nuances right. of the indian consumer i'll give you another example mm. back when uh, I was in Motorola mm. the average sound of her caller tune in a phone mm. was set at a certain level mm. which was very acceptable to mm. most international markets mm. where the overall ambient sound is much lower mm. and here you're talking of indian markets where mm. there's a huge din yeah. right so if you set it at the global standard yeah. you'll never hear your phone ring <laughs> so it was like double the level yeah. right which uh, you know the r&d folks mm. thought was like hugely mm. disturbing mm. and then we had to recognize that this is how indian consumers wanted it because mm. this is the kind of ambient sound it's mm. a noisy crowded place in most parts of the country mm. so i think these little nuances come over time mm. and if i would look at companies uh, that in a sense have nailed it i think there are a lot that have got it right for mm. me you know the benchmark in the consumer goods has always been uh, you deliver Hmm. right a lot of their product offerings have a sharp degree of indian customization yes i think right? they are adding yeah. adding aromas and flavors hmm. and i hmm. think that's pretty good yeah. uh, i think yeah to an extent i would say with ariel procter and gamble have slowly worked the code yes. right initially their hmm. focus was on cleanliness hmm. then they realized that a larger social messaging helps yeah da gache hai is what you are referring yeah that was the lever one the lever for, for, for surf excel mm, i surf think uh, ariel realized that that yeah. position was taken right. by uh, by 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 uh, unilever with right. surf mm. uh, and ariel created the whole thing saying that indian society is very patriarchal yeah. so they used a kind of social message campaign which is yes. share the load yeah. uh, reminding that yes, laundry is not just a woman's job right. and that suddenly made a lot of people rethink and say hey Uh, mm. that's a very interesting proposition right uh, like i said earlier pepsi and coke mm. pretty much understood so a lot of their communication has global cues yeah. but it's still very indian in style mm. in execution in a lot of the events they do they right. do music which is coke does coke studio mm. which is taking a whole range oh, of yes. artists from the indian subcontinent yes uh, pepsi does a lot of cricket but they do a lot of things mm. with a very local stance mm. so i think they're good i think both the e-commerce majors which is amazon and flipkart owned mm. by walmart 
I think I've cracked a lot of it. The right. fact that, uh, you know, they've realized that speed of delivery is important. Mm. But as much as speed of delivery is also convenience. The yeah. fact that yeah. can the delivery person leave the mm. package outside, especially when COVID was around, yes. when people weren't allowed. So I think companies over time mm. customize their offerings and get a lot of it right. Right. As is obvious, B2C companies and D2C companies mm. get it first because mm. they're dealing with end consumers. Mm. I think B2B takes mm. a little while longer. Mm. But I think over time, a lot of them do. Mm. The two key metrics that work for companies that get it right, I think one is recognizing that a lot of the innovation will originate from the local market. Mm. So until you get your Indian management suitably empowered mm. to take those calls, mm. as long as they don't offend any brand guidelines or business guidelines, I think that works the best. So I right. think one is to get the Indian mm. management. Mm. The second, I think equally important, is to have a good relationship with the local regulators and distributors. Right. right? Because a lot of the feedback is from the intermediaries. Mm. Uh, it may not necessarily come from your own teams. Mm. So you actually have to go out and listen to the voice of the consumer, mm. not just the end consumer, but also the intermediaries, the right. distributors, the store level guys. A lot of them would give you feedback. And I think oftentimes companies don't take that into account, don't listen enough. Right. Because think, the moment you listen, yeah. the mm. consumer is always telling you the truth. Right. So I think that's a very important thumb rule that you have mentioned. I would also like to take a step back. Mm -hmm. So when a global companies are looking at entering Indian markets, they have to fix their product first. Mm -hmm. And uh, besides fixing the product and making it successful, they can't just sit back and relax. Sure. There is a constant attempt to be made or a constant efforts to be, um, you know, some things we call it like on the toes all the time uh -huh. when it comes to servicing Indian consumer. Uh -huh. uh, so one is product launch and then uh, enhancing and staying with the product features and evolving along. Sure. So do you think global businesses um, understand that treadmill approach to being innovative, just cracking the product acceptance is not just the only thing, but continue to you know uh, evolve the features to cr create the stickiness of the consumer is also very important. Absolutely. Otherwise, I'm going to forget you know fill it, forget it, and you know things like that. Absolutely. Do you think global businesses are ready or are spending enough to continue with the stickiness because it requires them to keep reinventing the features and stuff? What is your opinion on that? I think as in everything, there's no one answer. Mm -hmm. I think it, we cannot generalize. Mm -hmm. I do believe though that smart global businesses get this very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just illustrate one more example. I think Star TV, mm -hmm. right? Which was, you know, owned by the Murdochs. Mm -hmm. I think they did a fabulous job. They mm -hmm. recognized that they were entering into the Indian media and entertainment market mm -hmm. when there were a couple of entrenched players. There was mm -hmm. Z already, which is an Indian company. There already was the state-owned broadcaster called Doodarshan. Mm -hmm. What Star did was Star quickly recognized that mm. their power was not in getting international content that they could translate or transliterate into India, was in creating local programming, mm. right? So they took a global property who's, who's going to be a millionaire mm. and they created Korn Banega Karodpati, oh, yes. shining on the biggest star. That lifted their profile. Yeah. And then they built a whole range of serials and soap operas mm. that were very Indian in theme, mm. but with world-class production values. Yes. So suddenly they changed the whole equation yes. and Star constantly innovated mm. when they realized that the Indian consumer was moving out of a very traditional setup of a Saas mm. Bahu or a mother-in-law, mm. daughter-in-law. Mm. They started getting slightly more modern themes. Right. Right. So I think they did very well. Mm. To be fair, I think Netflix and Prime have also got into the act and kind of lifted their game. So that mm. has been a great example. Mm. But the lesson to be taken from the star example is that you've got to constantly innovate mm. and be up to it. Mm. Innovation is a permanent state of mind. Mm. Uh, innovation is not a constant. And you've got to evolve with the changing tastes of the consumers. What was cool in 2000 mm. may not be cool in 2022. Right. So I think that has been one great example. So companies that have bothered to listen to the consumer, mm. given their local managements, the ability to innovate and the freedom to innovate, mm. and have evolved over time with changing tastes, have stayed on top, right? right. Star is still a dominant player. Mm. Disney, of course, has now acquired Star, and mm. now there's a little bit of a rethink. But I think these are the issues. Mm. The moment a global company sees India as nothing but a market to repurpose mm. their global content or repurpose mm. their global product, mm. I think that's where there's a hurdle, mm. right? You don't expect 
you know, one sixth of humanity, which is about 1.4 mm. billion Indians, happy with something that has worked elsewhere in the world and is now thrust upon them saying, hey, go use it, right? It's, mm. This has worked in large parts of the world. I think Indians by definition expect a bit of customization mm. and some part because the market is truly different, right? Mm. The weather conditions, the ambient conditions, mm. uh, you know, relationships are vastly different. Mm. And until brands recognize these changes and adapt to them, they will always struggle. Mm.